In this WrestleTalk news, news on a major creative change on last night's Raw. Ariel Helwani shoots on heat between himself and Tony Khan, and Luke's review of last night's Raw. Support WrestleTalk! Following WWE Hall of Famer Lita's Raw return back on the 6th of February, news had arisen that she would be swiftly followed back through the curtain by her biggest rival from back in the day, Trish Stratus. News broke regarding WWE's plans for Lita and Trish via a Twitter account by the name of Worked Wrestling. According to Worked, Trish would be set to return on the February 13th Raw last week in order to set up a match for the Elimination Chamber, teaming with Lita and Becky Lynch to take on Damage Control. Obviously, this didn't happen, with Worked insisting that despite things changing slightly, a Trish return was still on the cards for last night's Raw. Yet, again, that didn't exactly happen. We're still denied the Stratus faction. However, before everyone jumps on Worked for working us all, Fightful Select have come to the rescue to verify that Trish was in fact meant to be at Raw last night. In fact, she was actually there. She just didn't come out. According to Fightful, Trish was set to appear in a segment with Becky Lynch and Damage Control, as had seemingly been the plan from the start. However, these plans were nixed last minute due to a creative change. It was also noted that Trish left the building early. Don't give up hope just yet though, as Worked has once again insisted that Trish will finally make her return, with Work saying that she will be coming back for a storyline she's wanted to do for a long time. Moving over to one of the spiciest situations that occurred over the weekend, that being the beef between AEW President Tony Khan and MMA and pro wrestling journalist Ariel Helwani. The pair have had their differences in the past, most notably due to TK's controversial appearance on Helwani's MMA Hour podcast in October, where according to Helwani, he dodged questions, namely regarding the brawl out situation, as well as beef starting between MJF and Tony Khan due to MJF's appearance in an interview with Ariel Helwani. So yeah, they're not exactly exchanging birthday cards. However, the issues in question arose following Helwani's involvement on last night's Friday's Smackdown from Montreal, where Helwani provided build for the Sami Zayn vs Roman Reigns match at Elimination Chamber, something Tony took issue with, calling Helwani a fraud for appearing on WWE TV. This incited a short back and forth between the two, which according to Helwani on his latest MMA Hour podcast, caught fire in the WWE locker room and popped the boys in the back, with Helwani's use of the term snowman to describe Khan getting a particular particularly big reaction backstage. Dave Meltzer added to this on Wrestling Observer Radio, saying that line in particular made Helwani the star of stars within WWE. Helwani's WWE involvement that weekend, of course, did not end there, appearing both on the kickoff panel for the Chamber event, as well as being shown in the front row alongside MMA legend, George St. Pierre. When shown on screen, Michael Cole took the opportunity to throw some shade TK's way, referring to him as an unbiased, world-renowned combat sports journalist, Ariel Helwani, who asks all the hard questions whether or not you want to answer them. Helwani hailed Cole as a legend for the comment, and insisted that he would not allow Khan to soil his name, stating that Khan only took part in the exchange to get himself over on me, because Lord knows he needs it. Helwani also compared TK to UFC president Dana White, who is also known to have some pretty deep lying issues with Helwani, saying in regards to Khan, this f***ing guy doesn't know what journalism is, and he's no different than Dana White. According to Helwani, despite the drama, the whole experience made him feel like a part of the team in WWE. However, he insists he is still not a WWE employee, and would even be willing to work with AEW if the price is right. You know, I just don't see that happening right now. This episode is sponsored by Babbel, one of the top language learning apps in the world, and you can get 60% off your subscription by clicking our link below. In less time than it takes to watch SmackDown every week, Babbel can help you learn a whole new language, improve your career prospects, connect better with people from different countries, and learn how to say dos sevethos por favor for your holidays to impress your mates. One of our video editors, for instance, is French. I used to try to talk to her like this. CGI a tiny hat on my head, Terry. But now, thanks to Babbel, I can talk to her in her native tongue. CGI on Patisha Pusama Tech, Terry. I can speak English now. Babbel is scientifically proven to help you start learning a new language in three weeks by teaching real world conversations, preparing you to have practical chats about travel, business, relationships, and more. So start your self improvement journey on learning a new language today by downloading Babbel using our link below, where you'll get 60% off your subscription. And comment below with what language you want to learn. C, C, C. Please click that link as not only does it help support you as a person, it also helps us pay for people like. Terry. I'm saying if you don't sign up, she doesn't get paid. Jam that jam and learn that language with Babbel. 
And now it's time for my review of Monday Night Raw, aka you'd be better off watching the YouTube clips or just this review to keep up to date edition of Monday Night Raw in about five minutes. After an excellent video package showing what went down in the main event of Elimination Chamber, we got Sami Zayn kicking off the episode, and thank Crom that he did. A few months ago, I came under fire in the comments section on this channel for saying that the Bloodline wasn't just the best thing in all of WWE, it might be the only good thing in WWE right now. And I do regret that quite hyperbolic statement because there is plenty of good stuff going on right now in the company. But watching this episode of Raw did make me revisit that original statement. This Sammy and Bloodline story is so good that nothing else on the show, outside of Cody Rhodes, but we'll get to him in a moment, feels important. The Bloodline story is up here, and everything else is down here. Now that is way better than the state of WWE this time last year, when every single thing on the show was way down here. But once this Sammy segment was over, you could more or less change the channel and just catch up on storylines via clips on YouTube. And even if you didn't, you wouldn't have missed out on much. With all of that out of the way, boy howdy was this a great segment. There were fans who speculated that the final shot of Elimination Chamber would be the embrace of longtime friends and even longer time rivals Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, but we didn't get that. Some felt that was stupid, while others argued that it made sense, because why would Kevin hug Sammy after all that he's done to him over the last few months? And that was exactly KO's point here. Sammy says he can't take down the bloodline alone and wants the help of Kevin, but Owens knows he can do it without Sammy. He ended this segment with the devastating line, if you want someone to take down the bloodline, Ask your buddy Jay. Holy shirt balls! Both men were excellent here, and it was beyond the loudest the crowd were all night. It's a brilliant next chapter in what has been a phenomenal story. But never mind that shirt, here comes Baron Corbin! Baron Corbin attacks Sami Zayn, and it led to a match that Sami won and went way longer than I ever thought it would do. I guess we do have three hours to fill. Austin Theory cut a promo on Edge, but made sure we all knew that he was facing John Cena at WrestleMania, who returns to Raw in a couple of weeks' time. Musa for Ali beat Dolph Ziggler with an excellent reversal of the Famouser and looked surprised that he managed to get a win. The Miz was given a gift by Maurice, which he'll reveal on Miz TV next week, and we got another really good Cody segment as we build towards him versus Roman at Mania. And make no mistake about it, I think we can kiss those ideas of Sammy being put in the main event of Mania goodbye. A couple of weeks ago, we had an incredible Cody Rhodes segment with Paul Heyman, which really laid out the stall of what the story between him and Reigns is for Mania. And last week, he had another awesome segment with Sami Zayn to make you, the fans, believe that it could be the two of them headlining Mania instead. Now that Sami hasn't won the title, this segment was designed to let you know that it is 100% Cody versus Roman at Mania and no one else. The problem was that it also didn't cover much ground that hasn't already been covered in a much better promo segment a fortnight ago. Paul Heyman appeared on the Titan Tron, hurt from the Kevin Owens stunner and didn't want to see Cody face to face, and pointed out that maybe Cody doesn't actually want to win the title, because if he does, he'll be on the road or doing press the entire time, with no time left over to see his wife or daughter. And being on the road is what made Dusty Rhodes appear like an absentee father for a lot of Cody's childhood. So does Cody want the same life for his family. It's certainly emotionally charged, but didn't quite have the same impact as the other promo. Not helped by Heyman appearing via video. It was basically a pre-tape which Cody didn't respond to, instead looking down the barrel of the camera to let Roman know that he doesn't want to see Heyman again and he'll cross paths with Roman soon. It was less of a step forward and more of a step sideways. The feud is still hot and the crowd was still super into Cody, but it wasn't the big shot of adrenaline in my soul that this story might need in order to feel as hot or even hotter than Sami Zayn. Asuka beat Nikki Cross, who then showed Bianca Belair that she's well scarier by biting down on a missed capsule. Nikki later told Candice LeRae that all of her friends are gone. Sanity WW return confirmed. Carmella challenged Asuka for a match next week. Rollins cut a promo on Logan Paul. And Amos challenged Brock Lesnar to a match at WrestleMania. Wait, what?
Seth Rollins beat The Miz via ref stoppage when he hit three stomps on him. Chelsea Green did more of her Karen shtick over the phone with Adam Pearce and Bronson Reed intimidated Chad Gable backstage. Damage Control were guests on Ding Dong Hello, which brought out Becky Lynch, who wanted to challenge for the Raw Women's Tag Team Championships I actually forgot existed. And Bailey said that Becky couldn't challenge for the belts because she has no friends. Mate, are you thick? This happened just a few weeks ago. And sure enough, Lita did return again to set up a tag match for next week. It was done in a very fun way where Becky and Lita goaded Bailey into accepting the challenge against the wishes of Damage Control, which has been the story of this feud for the last few months. Bronson Reed beat Chad Gable when Gable got distracted by Otis chatting with Maxine Dupree at ringside, and it was a shame that this distraction also distracted the crowd as they basically missed Gable doing the chaos theory on Bronson Reed. That was awesome! Reed won with the tsunami. Elias got beat up by Bobby Lashley, and Edge said that Judgment Day were behind him, which means they're for sure interfering in the main events. And Sure enough, Balor distracted Edge, so Austin Theory retained his United States Championship in a very good main event. The action was awesome, but the finish let it down somewhat. I may be in the minority here, but I am so over seeing Edge beat Judgment Day every time they have a match, and then Judgment Day beat him down in a segment on Raw so we can set up another match for Edge to win. Anyone who says this was a bad episode of Raw is telling you that in bad faith, but it certainly was missable. Less a journey down the road to WrestleMania, and more of a stop off at Reading Services eastbound for a Costa and a Greggs. This week's Raw is 3 out of 5. We launched a brand new series over on the WrestleTalk podcast channel where myself, Pete and Tempest are trawling through the cavalcade of crap to find the worst wrestling match of all time. And we kicked that off with Undertaker vs Goldberg from Super Showdown 2019. Here is a clip. Oh, and this, they try and do the... Oh, oh, no, and they the just bird, fall why down. Why would you do that? Oh, why, would you do, why would you try it? And they At just fall point, down, and now Undertaker's just like, we just got a giant oh, choke slam. Oh, oh, oh no. no. And he just sits oh, down. One, two... Three. Oh, mercifully, that's over. When was oh. the last time Undertaker won a match with a chokeslam?